everybody, I'm Suzanne, and today's painting, we're going to paint a black standard poodle. Now, it's not just any black standard poodle, it's Singer's brother, Teddy. Now, Teddy is my daughter's dog, and we got these two boys at the same time, and they have grown up together, they play together, they're buds. And my daughter asked for Christmas that she would like to have Teddy's portrait, and so it's, it's, it's very special to me. <laughs> He's like my grandchild. And so uh, that is what today's uh, painting is all about. Now I'm gonna show you the photo reference that I used to do Teddy's portrait. And that's right here. And you can see he's a stunning dog. He is absolutely gorgeous. And here's the completed painting that I did from that photo reference. And you can see, I mean, when you're painting a black dog, there's always the challenge of trying to find colors. Now, black is the presence of all color, right? So in this, in his fur, there's lots of purples and blues and all good stuff. Now, she did ask that the painting be put in a very gold ornate type of frame. So I really want to include the color too. So that helps pull it all together. In my opinion, it helped pull the painting together and, uh, I had fun. I had a lot of fun, actually. So if you're my members, thank you so much for being here. If you're my subscribers, thank you, thank you. And to my Patreon folks as well, thank you so much. And uh, know that, uh, yeah, this is probably going to also be a Patreon um, painting uh, <laughs> video at some point as well. So sit back, paint along if you will, and let's go ahead and jump into Teddy's portrait. Now, with just starting Teddy's portrait, being that he's basically a black standard poodle, I just put a little ivory black down and uh, a little king's blue. I'm just gonna just roughly block him in. And this is not to suggest that these are the only colors we're gonna use on Teddy, but it's pretty much the predominant color. So I just wanna do a very loose sketch with the paint. And this is what we're gonna start with. Now this is our setup today. I've got my uh, reference of Teddy. And of course the substrate we're painting on today is an 11 by 14. I think that's right, or 14 by, hmm. I think it's 11 by 14. And it is a, um, a very smooth uh, panel. It's in a, um, it's one of uh, Da Vinci's very smooth panels. And uh, our paint. So we're gonna go ahead and block Mr. Ted Sturt in. Okay, now here we go. I'm just going to be very, very loose with this uh, initially. Uh, I just wanna get the sizes, you know, the proportions down. And I'm not really certain that I have it exactly yet. So I'm gonna use paint thinner, believe it or not. And suggest I'll go in where I see the dark values. And um, I'm just kind of popping things in where I think they need to go. So a lot of times when I start something like this, I have my eyes sort of shut. I really probably should have um, some blue. Some, I'm going to put some ultramarine blue down. As I continue to block in, um, I have added some ultramarine blue to the palette and I will slowly add a few more colors. So currently I'm just using ultramarine blue, ivory black and king's blue to block um, Teddy in. And you can see that's, 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 <laughs> I could almost do the entire portrait with just those colors, but um, I'm just kind of loosely blocking it in and um, I'm using a, um, I believe the brush I'm using is a number two Eclipse Long Filbert, and it's doing the trick. It's getting it done.
And as I continue to block it in, still using only those three colors. Oops. You can almost hear the dog is coming alive. <laughs> and that would be uh, Teddy's brother, Singer, uh, barking. But anyhow, I am just moving through. And I'm starting to add a little bit more detail as I move. And I can always use some of the background colors just to kind of carve certain areas in and, and, and make some other areas more pronounced. And I keep re-enhancing my darker values. So if you know me, you know that dark values, dark values, dark values, dark values. So I'm just kind of popping it in and he's starting to take shape. Um, I still know that I've got to bring it out a little bit more towards the right side of the, of the uh, substrate, which the substrate that I am painting on is an 11 by 14 uh, super slick um, gessoed panel. But I'm just kind of popping it in, popping it in, adding a little bit more light. You can see how much highlight he has on his muzzle in the front of his face. So just keep moving through. And Teddy's portrait is on the easel over here, and Teddy's brother is on the floor taking a snooze. Now to mix a background color, and I've added more ultramarine blue and the uh, burnt sienna to make my gray. And you can see that up on the top I've added some more colors, and I've added some more purple type colors. Purple Lake is added in there, and I've added... Um, Ooh, what else did I did? I think red matter is in there as well. And that is what I'm using to add some of the purples in his, his fur. And I will actually add a little bit. Oh, and that's turquoise. He has a turquoise shine to both his eyes and his nose. And that happens to be um, a turquoise by Gamblin. And it is ooh, thalo turquoise, I believe. And it does, it does make just exactly the right shine to his nose. So I'm starting to add a little bit more detail and refinement to his nose. And so uh, I can make some corrections. Uh, I needed that background paint to be in so that I have that soft edge when I'm doing the ears and his uh, top knot. But I'll have the sharpness where I, I actually need the sharpness too. So, uh, but I did have to get that background in. And I'm just working that nose and I keep bringing stuff out and you know, you know me, I'm always going to uh, be morphing along as I paint and, uh, but he's coming and I'm starting to see Teddy, the dog that I know come alive here. Ah, see, now I'm starting to add some more of the purples. And that is Purple Lake that I'm adding in the muzzle. And it seems to be just doing right. And I'm using the same Purple Lake added to some of the Burnt Sienna and Ivory Black to make this eye color. 
and you know how much I love eyes. And I just wanted to do the, you know, the lighter part of his iris. And, uh, and I'm, again, that is not white that I'm putting in. It's titanium white and that turquoise that I put in his nose is actually the same shine that I'm putting on the eye. And uh, you got to remember that the eyeball is round. It's like a little marble inside of that socket. So I've got to create the roundness and the form inside the actual eye. So the light will hit the top of the eyeball. And that's why you see that lighter area right above that shine that I put in there. And then his eyelashes. So here's a little closer look at the eye as I'm popping it in. And you can see how I'm creating the roundness of the eye by putting the lighter values on top where the shine would hit it. And there's actually a little look of a, like a windowsill or a window in that eye. So that's what I'm popping in there. And just kind of using that King's Blue to create the lower lid. And uh, yeah, he's coming alive. I'm starting to see that eye and I bring it out a little bit more because I didn't have quite have the shape. And so you can see that that is just a really nice uh, red, um, I think that's brown matter with a little bit of white. And just kind of popping the very subtle, subtle color changes and, and shifts. But um, since they are subtle, you just really have to watch for them, especially in a black dog, because it can be quite a challenge to find all the colors that exist in that black dog. So. And of course, we've got to get the eye. And it's one of the few places that there is color other <laughs> than black and blue and white that the actual fur has. So that the eye and the collar that will go in later are really the few places that are there is a lot of color different other than black. Now we're starting to put in a little bit more detail. And so, you know, this where the um, the front of his muzzle bifurcates or the over the bridge of his nose. So you kind of have that that idea in there and the little bit of hairs. Of course, the poodles have their faces shaved to keep them from having very long hair. But as they grow out, you can see the curliness in that facial hair as well. And I'm trying to get all the little tiny hairs that are in this area. And they shine because they get wet, you know. And I love it. Um, I love this little muzzle. I just want to kiss this little muzzle because this is my grand dog, folks. And uh, so, yes, I am just painting all his little bits in. And I'm excited for Hannah to see this painting. And she'll see it, she'll see it on Christmas. That's when she'll get this painting. So um, um, I'm excited for her to have it. But again, going back to the dark values and I'm cutting everything in and just making sure that I still have more and more dark. And I'm using predominantly, I know that looks very, very black, but I'm using a little bit of either purples or um, if I'm not using Purple Lake, I'm probably using um, the Prussian blue mixed in with ivory black to give me that deepness. And uh, I love it. it. It's working out really, really well. And then I can go ahead and put in that little bit of the purples in and just kind of moving around the muzzle. This is, you know, you got to get this part right. And 
um, I can see Teddy here. Now I, I'm starting to see uh, my daughter's dog because I'm getting that muzzle a little deeper. I'm bringing, I brought it down a little bit more and he's a good looking boy and he's actually coming around. So you can see I'm making a little correction by bringing his lower her, his lower mandible down a little bit more. I'm deepening his bottom jaw, if you will. So since I'm having to do that, that means I have to move everything else, right? So that collar that I so carefully cut in, guess what? I'm fixing to go ahead and cover that over. Um, so I'm, I'm marking where his lip is, and now I'm putting his bottom lip and his chin, etc., is going into place. And... Again, I am just really being careful to make sure that I get all the parts because they're dark. Um, if you look at that lower mandible in the photo reference, you can see how dark it is. So you really have to try to discern where everything goes. And this is where you say, oh, i got to lower the ear a little bit more. And by lowering the ear, that means I have to cover over that, that collar. So guess what? The collar's going bye-bye. And I just go ahead and say, oh, I guess cover that up because now I've got to redo it anyway. And I've already signed the piece, right? Because I like cutting in my signatures into wet paint. So I've got to kind of cover that up and I just wipe it off. So you can see it. It's very, it's a little bit more subtle. I kind of like it like that. That works. Uh, so now I've got to kind of reassign where his back is, bring his ear down a little bit more. And then his muzzle is going to, I mean, his uh, collar will be a little bit lower than I had initially intended. And Teddy does have a little bit of a white blaze on his chest, but because I'm having to lower everything, uh, unfortunately, we're not putting in uh, his little white blaze on his chest, but it's okay because this looks just like Teddy. I mean, that's Teddy's eye, that's Teddy's muzzle. Everything is looking and coming about in a nice sort of way, and I am really feeling this dog.
just adding a little bit more detail in the muzzle and nose area. And then we're going to move on to that ear. Now, as I mentioned before, um, you know, Teddy has the traditional full ear. Um, my daughter leaves his hair longer on his ears and he's got this luxurious locks, if you will. And he's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So this is a fun time for me to play because, uh, yeah, I shave uh, singer's ears and Teddy has the full ears. So now it's time to play. So I have to have the wet paint down to make them look soft so I can create those soft edges. And I'm running his ear right off the, uh, the substrate here, and that's okay. Uh, so, you know, now I'm using um, a combination of the um, King's Blue, a little bit of Ultramarine Blue, and also the Prussian Blue. And you see the Prussian Blue almost has a little bit of a greeny tint. Um, a greeny, you know, there's a greeniness about that blue. Okay, so by bringing this out, I really feel like I've gotten this more in line with uh, the way Teddy looks. So you can see from the um, reference photo to here, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. And uh, so I'm gonna start adding some of his, uh, um, his hair, if you will. It is a rainy, rainy day here in Kingsport. Okay. So I'm using a uh, number two ivory long filbert. It's a little older. This is an older brush. So it's kind of, I'm taking advantage of the, the frayedness, if you will. And it does, it, it allows me to do um, I don't know how else to say it, but it's, it's allowing me to do this hair in a believable fashion. Now this is wet and uh, just so you know, I have a dog singer. It's Teddy's brother. It's coming between. <laughs> he's pushing me from behind. So I have to, he just likes to get in there. So I'm just, just doing these hairs. I have to show you what he's doing. So singer, what are you doing back there? He's bored. He's a bored poodle. He's a very bored boy and he pushes me from behind and he's a mess and it's raining and he's bored. So he's looking for me to entertain him. Is that correct, Singer? Mama, I'm bored. But yes, Singer and Teddy are brothers. And when you say Teddy's name, he knows that name. Where's Teddy? Ah, your boy, your brother, where is Teddy? <gasps> Did I say Teddy, brother, what? Now he's going to watch for him. He's going to get up in the window and he's going to watch for his brother. Because sometimes Teddy comes here to the studio and Singer loves it. And we they both get groomed right across the street. So sometimes when they come back from grooming, they either one gets to visit. So he's looking for his brother now. Mean trick, right, Singer? Is Teddy going to come here today? Says, no, he's not coming today. You better watch for him. You better go look. Is he going to come? Did I say how much fun I was having putting in all these, this beautiful hair? Yeah. So it does help to have a little bit of a wet surface to keep the softness of the loops. And basically what I'm doing is um, putting down the dark values first, putting in the medium values, and then the highlights on top of each of the loops. So I call them loops for lack of a better word, but for each little tendril that hangs down, um, I do the little highlights after. And yeah, he's you know there's a lot of a lot of curl a lot of hair going on here so I've got to get it all in but it's coming together and um, the brush that I'm using interesting enough is actually a very it's an older number two rose uh, rosemary it's an ivory it's um, I love the ivories um, they're 
but this is an older one. So it's a bit frayed. And with it being just a little bit frayed, it, it makes for a really wonderful way to make the hairs. So again, folks, I almost always repurpose a brush. I almost never throw them away. And th even though this is an old brush, it's still working out great. Okay, folks, I've switched from the number two ivory um, uh, filbert to uh, a really small pointed round, and it's an eclipse uh, pointed round, and I believe it's like a zero, maybe a one, but it's a nice tiny point, and it's got a great point, where I'm now able to get in and do a lot of the smaller, finer details. Again, you're seeing the little hairs, the little highlights, um, the whisker tracks are put in, and I'm just going about adding any more detail. I'm getting close to the finish on this piece. And I know a lot of it has to just be little highlights. Looking for subtle value shifts and color shifts. And that's how it's all getting pulled together. So you can see I'm just kind of moving about. Um, I'm going about the whole piece at this point because I'm trying to see where the light hits. So you can see I'm just putting the lighter values on the tops of where the the loops of hair that I've already painted, I'm putting the lighter values in and just putting in where the shine goes. So every now and then I've got to stand off the piece and kind of look at it from a little bit of a distance just to make sure that I'm not so, uh, so completely focused up front and missing the big picture as they say. So putting in the hairs and using that fun little brush, great brush. Uh, now time for the bit of bling um, on Teddy's Martingale collar. Now you can see how much lower I had to drop these loops because you can see the ghost of where it once was. And so that's all that little ghosty area. And this is kind of one of those bad things about cutting it in. I was so determined and so sure that that's where it was going to go. That paint dried. So now I've got those little that little area where the, the collar was. And so that means I will be putting a lot of texture and fur down in that area. It's not going to be noticed, but I notice it now and that will make me crazy until I fix it. But the colors that I'm using to do the collar, um, I'm using basically the, um, it's yellow ochre and a little bit of raw sienna and titanium white. And every now and then I'm going to add a little bit of, of, of a richer color, like a little, like, uh, you know, I'm using burnt umber also in some of the darker parts of the links. This is actually very intricate for me because um, I'm trying to make sure that I get, you know, the accuracy or getting pretty darn close to the way that that um, part of the collar looks. And then, of course, trying to create a, a complete circle. Yeah, it's almost as bad as perspective for me, but I'm, I'm knocking it out. I'm getting it done, looking at the negative spaces. So when I get a little crazy about how the links should look, Instead of looking at the links, I look at the fur behind the links, and that helps me make a more accurate uh, collar, collar there. But um, so you can see, I'm just kind of trying to put in the negative spaces, the space behind the collar, so it's the fur shining through. And that helps me make the collar look more realistic.
back to that little pointed round, doing the last little minute details, uh, putting in basically titanium white and some of the shiny parts of that collar. And, you know, these is the last minute details, folks. I am about to wrap it up. I'm looking this over and feeling pretty good. Uh, I actually like the bling that the collar offers because I think it's going to look great with that gold frame that my daughter wanted. And uh, so I'm going to just basically take a step back, look it over, see if there's any other little highlights, little places in the hair and the fur and the ears and all this good stuff. And just put a couple little bit, uh, little bits of uh, shine and highlights. And folks, we're about to wrap it up. And I think we're finished. Now, I know Teddy. Teddy is my boy, singer's brother. And he's as much, uh, you know, he's like my grandson because it's my daughter's dog. And this is her obviously going to be her Christmas present. Now, there are challenges when painting black dogs because you're always looking for color. And so you can see even in Teddy's photo references, there's some purples in amongst the blues and different values of those colors. So, you know, I wanted to incorporate those as much color as I can get into Teddy's, uh, um, his beautiful hair. And unlike Singer, uh, Teddy has full ears. Now I, I shave, <laughs> I shave Singer's ears down cause I just don't want to deal with the hair, but, um, Teddy has that beautiful, beautiful full hair, which makes it a lot of fun to do all the little curls and stuff. And being that this will be hung in a gold frame, I thought it was really important to include the collar. And I think the collar will really uh, stand out nicely in the frame. Now there's a little bit more space there, but that's that's gonna look nice. So we may go ahead and take a look and see what this is gonna look like in its frame. But yeah, I think I'm done. and. Uh, I'll let it sit for a little bit. I've got a couple weeks before Christmas and I can let it dry. And if I feel like I need to color correct or um, do a little glazing, I may, but I think I'm done. Well, I hope you liked today's video. And if you did, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and uh, I'll catch you on the other side. Not a bad look. Um, I'm really glad that I included the, uh, the necklace, his uh, choke chain in his, uh, painting because it really does, um, you know, it's enhanced by the gold frame. And again, always trying to find some color. Well, I added a, I had a little bling to it. My daughter did want kind of an elaborate uh, gold frame on her present. She knows she's getting this. This is what she asked for. And, but she's not seeing the painting. So, well, I, I, I'll have to film the reveal for another day. So thank you so much for joining me. And if you liked, again, like this today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Wasn't that fun? I, I really had fun painting this portrait. And as you know, he, he's special to me. I know this boy, you know, every time uh, Hannah goes on vacation, I get to keep him. And sometimes he's even in the studio with me. And actually the photo reference that I worked from was one that I took of Teddy when he was here at the studio. And uh, yeah, it was, it was fun. I really did enjoy doing all the long hair because now Singer, I shave his ears. He's in what's called a German clip. And uh, Teddy is more the traditional full, full ear. And so since I don't get to paint a lot of full ears, this was a lot of fun. So yeah, I have to keep this a secret from my daughter until Christmas. So hopefully, uh, you know, I'll have, I'll, I'll be telling her, don't watch, don't watch this video. And then she can watch it uh, later and watch the whole process from start to finish on her beloved boy, Teddy. Uh, Teddy is her life, as we all know how important our lives are enriched by our, our fur, fur babies, right? So yeah, this was, a, this was a fun painting to do. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and consider becoming a member. If you're looking for a painting mentor or just a, a painting coach, go ahead and check out my membership program here on YouTube. We'll be doing some live streams and all kinds of fun stuff coming up very soon. And we also check out my uh, Patreon channel as well. So from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you so much for joining me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.